What is up you guys and welcome back to a brand new episode of Chasing Justice. I am your host Suhan Michaels. So very quickly before today's video starts, thank you for seven subscribers. We here at Chasing Justice really, really, really appreciate your guys' love and support and viewings. Thank you so, so much. And just know that every view and every subscriber and every person that comes to our channel and supports us, we are thankful for. So, and also we've hit seven subscribers. I don't know if I've just said that prior, but wow, thank you so much. Although that's very little to some people, to us here, doing it as an independent team. It's just amazing, it feels good. It lets us know that you guys are interested in the work and you guys appreciate the work and you guys like watching. So thank you so much for your constant love and support. And also, very quickly before today's episode starts, if you guys would like to like today's video, if you want to, there's no pressure. And whilst you're doing though, you might as well subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you have the option as well, when you subscribe, you can turn on your bell and your option will provide you with, your bell will provide you with two options. So basically your first option is personalised. So if you're into murder mysteries, say for example, and that's the only thing you want to see from our channel, um, you can always switch to personalised. Or if you want to see all of our content, because we're going to not, I know a lot of people have been giving us feedback and saying, you know, we're doing a lot of just murders, where's the missing persons, where's the other elements to true crime, they're coming, don't worry, uh, they're on the way, uh, but yeah, you also have the option as well of um, the all option, so that's the second option, and you can watch all of our content, so girl, it is entirely up to you. As always, there is no pressure, and we're going to get straight into today's video. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Chasing Justice, Season 1, Episode 5, The Case of William Howe. So, before we begin discussing about today's topic um, and the murder in particular, let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about who William Howe was prior to the murder and William Howe's life. As his life prior does hold a lot of relevancy in understanding not only who William Howe is as a person, but the crime and possible motives, so on and so forth. So at the time of the murder, William Howe was a 63-year-old retired veteran, which basically means he had served for his country. He had been, you know, he'd gone out in the armed forces, so on and so forth. And so because Mr. William Howe was um, a retired veteran, he was well respected within the community. Mr. William Howe was also described as a hugely popular person amongst the community. He was very friendly, a lot of people knew him. He was a very well-known presence and a very well-known person within his local community. A very communicative person from what I understand and somebody who people really did like and also respect because of his military service. And the fact that all in all, Mr. William Howe was just in general a really nice person, a very authentic person a very caring person um, and a very approachable person, just a very, that type of person you want to be around. And he was described as a pleasure to be around, but also Mr. William Howe liked to mind his business and he was also known to be very private, not letting a lot of people into his personal life or really divulging uh, much into his personal life, whether that be in conversations with friends or family. He was just all in all a very private person, which I can respect. And that's what a lot of us are like. I'm very much like that. I'm very private myself. Um, but I, I am I am open with my life, but I do have an element of privacy to me, even though I do do YouTube as well. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like we all have that element of privacy to us. It's I feel like it's natural. At the time of the murder, William Howe was single and he was described as a bachelor. Now, I may get the definition of a bachelor wrong. Um, I don't personally know the exact definition of it, but from what my research tells me is a bachelor is somebody who is single and they like to just go out and have fun and do their own thing in a sexual manner. You know, each to their own. We don't judge here, so... And at the time of Mr. Howe's murder, he was actually residing on a first floor flat. That was such a tongue twister. He resided in a first floor flat. We got it in the end. And this flat was located on Victoria Road in Worthing, which is located in West Sussex. 
So this brings us to Tuesday the 9th of January 1990. 63-year-old William Howe's body was discovered in his flat by police. He was deceased at the time. And just for a reference point, uh, his flat was located on Victoria Road in Worthing, West Sussex. Mr Howe was found lying face down on the floor like this. And he was also tied with an electrical cord, his hands and his, and his feet. Apologies about the stutter. So upon a post-mortem, it was determined that Mr William Howe actually died via asphyxiation, which is strangulation. Also, I want to point out that it is evident that this 63-year-old man had been tortured. He was bound, he was bloody, he was beaten, um, and later it was signed in his post-mortem asphyxiation. So instantly within itself, that's a red flag for me. I mean, I'm no criminal psychologist or nothing like that. I haven't studied this, but to me that screams very personal. There's something personal to that, uh, because... If it's a random attack, you're not going to go to that much effort. You're not going to tie somebody up and beat them and, you know, make a, a scene the way that Mr William Howe was found. He was found in a pretty brutal and beaten up manner. And typically from what we see, people that, you know, kill strangers and people that they don't know and that aren't familiar to, uh, they don't go to that much effort. Whereas somebody that knows the person a little bit more personally or sometimes, although it is rare, it does happen, uh, very close friends, possible family members, we don't know. We can only speculate and hypothesize and, you know, go through it all because we don't have any solid answers. But I just wanted to point that out. So that's a red flag right there. So police and investigating services and the postmortem report did suggest that it was possible, although not proven, that Mr William Howe had been also beaten with a hammer whilst he was tied up and defenceless. Possibly. I do want to stress possibly, and I must, I do say this in every episode, but if I don't have 100% proof, I'm not going to sit here and give it to you guys as fact. So it's a possibility. There was also a possible uh, slash potential signs that Mr William Howe had been beaten with bare fists and had been stomped on repeatedly, not just once, but a good few times. And also that one of the killer or killers had put their knees on his, um, I think it was chest or rib, and it had caused his ribs to fracture because of the pressure, which I didn't know this also until I started doing my research. You can actually asphyxiate someone to death by I believe it's sitting on their chest in a certain position or putting a lot of pressure on a certain position of their chest. Uh, I could be wrong, but from what my research has told me, that's what I've gathered. So if anybody wants to correct me, please feel free. Let's start a discussion as the chase for justice continues. So whilst police and investigating services were conducting an investigation into the murder of Mr. William Howe, it is believed that he was killed the day before. So he was discovered on Tuesday the 9th of January 1990. However, police and investigating services do believe he was killed on Monday the 8th of January 1990. And was found the day after. I'm not sure how he was, how the police were informed. Um, I couldn't find that out. There isn't actually a lot of information out there about Mr William Howe's case and his murder and... There's not a lot of really detailed or factual um, information other than what I'm providing on the screen here, if you guys care to pause it and read it. Other than that, I couldn't find much, much more about this case. So I don't know what caused the police to go there. I don't know if somebody walked in and found his body. I just don't know. Police and investigating services also determined that they believed from their standpoint and their investigations, they come to the conclusion that a possible motive for Mr. William Howe's murder was robbery. So Mr. William Howe was actually known to keep a safe in his house that contained tens of thousands of pounds and some really expensive jewellery. I'm not sure exactly how much jewellery was there, nor do I know exactly how much money was there. Um, down to the T because uh, it feeds prior into the section where we were talking about prior of Mr William Howe being a private person so he didn't tell people 
exactly how much money was in the safe. If he ever told people he had money in a safe, um, I don't know. Again, we don't know how much jewellery he had. But they do suspect either he's told like a really close friend or a family member and word's gotten out that way and somebody has overheard and somebody's thought to their self, okay, I'm going to take that safe, I'm going to take that money and that jewellery or whatever the contents in the safe's going to be and, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can to get it. And they did. They took a 63-year-old man's wife because they wanted to be greedy. However, it is believed because also I want to mention that Mr. William Howe's home was described as ransacked and looked like a looked like somebody had just gone looking for somebody was looking for something is basically what they're saying. And they believe that the killer or killers did not find this safe at all. So they're so, so they'd gone through all that and they weren't even smart enough to find the actual safe which I believe from my research was actually found in the home which again I just want to draw a big question mark you know what I mean it's confusing like you go to that much effort you take somebody's life just for their money and the contents within their safe and you can't even find their safe a small portion of fingerprints were able to be recovered from the scene However, because it was such a small amount, like it wasn't like a real, you know how you have your fingerprint here? It wasn't a full fingerprint. It was a very tiny portion of a fingerprint. And because the fingerprint was such a tiny portion, they couldn't really determine much more information uh, because it wasn't a full fingerprint. And if you guys didn't know, every human being on this planet has a different, a unique shaped fingerprint. So that's a little bit of science for you guys, a little bit of biology there. Also, police and investigating services determined that due to the brutal and just the way that they really, whoever killed William Hyatt really, whether it was one person or multiple people, they really went in and this man was found in a brutal, really beaten, really messed up way. And they believe that the killers, due to the fact that he was found in such a brutal state, they believe that his killers would have had a substantial amount of blood splatters on their clothing because they're kicking him, they're punching him. <clears throat> there is a potential or possibility that a hammer was used. So if you're bashing somebody with a hammer with reasonable force or sometimes overly reasonable force because some people have that rage in them and you don't know until you get to those moments where you your rage really takes over. So if you're hitting someone with a hammer, which is a blunt and heavy object within itself, you're going to get blood splatter, not only on your clothing, but on your skin, your face, your hair, the wall, other areas in your 360 degree radius, because it's blood splatter and you're hitting with a force. However, what kind of gives this theory a little bit of Gives you a bit an ability to doubt this theory. So the theory of, yeah, they, there was people there that beat him and they were covered in blood. What kind of makes you question that? <clears throat> that theory is the fact that there was no eyewitnesses that reported seeing anybody covered in blood. Person or persons. Nobody was spotted around the area that was seen in blood. Uh, but you could theorise and you could question the fact maybe... <clears throat> It was a planned attack. Maybe there was multiple people involved and maybe they decided they weren't going to inform the police. Or <clears throat> maybe Mr. William Hyde's killer was, in fact, somebody who he knew and lived very close, within a very close proximity and could be able to go in, do what they needed to do or they felt they needed to do and then get out without being seen like that fast. But that's a possibility. We can only hypothesise. We can't, you know, I have nothing in black and white. So that is up to you guys to determine for yourself as the chase for justice continues. I almost forgot. It is also possible that the killer are killers. Um, they could have very well been covered in splattered blood. And it is very possible, although not proven, that the person or persons who killed Mr. William Howe could have easily brought a change of clothing with them. And 
you know what I mean? Just changed their clothes after it was done and walked out the door. And nobody would have looked twice because why would you? It's somebody just in clothing, ordinary everyday clothing. It doesn't stand out. So Mr. William Howe's murder resulted in a very much in-depth and detailed and a very well sought after case for the police. They wanted to catch whoever did this. And there was a huge manhunt within the local community for eyewitnesses, possible witnesses, potential witnesses, the killer themselves or themselves. Um, just any kind of information that they could find because William Howe was very well known and a lot of people described him as a lovely man, very pleasant, friendly, the kind of guy you would want to spend time with. Um, so a lot of people wanted justice for him and rightly so. If you had a friend that you adored and that was, you know, do you know what I mean? You'd want justice for your friend too. So I totally understand. The investigation was that in depth that they actually started looking at international links and international suspects, possible suspects. And these leads slash links slash possible um, clues, they led to countries like France, Africa and Australia, which, like I mentioned before, uh, Mr. William Howe resides in West Sussex or resided in West Sussex, which is in the UK. And if you know... If you're in the UK, Australia, from the UK to go to Australia, that is like the other side of the world. So that's how in-depth this investigation was. It led them from the UK all the way to Australia, Africa, France. And still there was no 100% definitive lead or 100% definitive suspect or anybody that they could identify. No leads, no witnesses, no new clues, no nothing. And 30 years later, the murder of William Howe still goes unsolved and we're still chasing justice for Mr. William Howe also. 30 years later. So I'm going to provide you guys with some contact information if you have any information on the case of William Howe. And I will also provide this information in the description box down below as well. If you have any information on the murder of William Howe, which happened on the 8th of January 1990, please contact the following. You can contact the police, which is 999 or 999. You can contact the non-emergency police, which is 101. And you can contact Crime Stoppers, which is 0800 or 555 or 111 or you can also visit the Crime Stoppers website, which is Crime Stoppers and then a little dash and then UK.org. I don't know why I felt the need to spell that out, but hey. And that concludes today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate you guys. We've noticed that there's seven subscribers. Shout out to that. I love all seven of you. And thank you for you guys who constantly tune into these videos. Uh, we do these videos for you. Um, like we've said before, we don't get paid for doing these videos. We have been offered sponsorships and denied all of them, uh, purely because we don't feel like we're on that level yet. So we have turned down a few sponsorships, um, but we just want to give you guys content that you guys can enjoy and content that is active, that you can look into research for yourself today. A lot of these cases are unsolved. So you can look into your own, you can conduct your own research, so on, so forth. But thank you for the support and the views. We really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you in the next one as the Chase for Justice continues.